Welcome, my friends, to another alliteration gaming video. And today I have some super crazy hot breaking news right off the charts. I literally woke up like 20 minutes ago, saw this as soon as it was posted, and I was like, I gotta get my thoughts out there on this because this is something I have talked about like crazy. They have issued an update to the banned and eroded card list. And uh, it's really crazy. It's quite the doozy. It's way more than I ever would have expected. Um, but before I really want to put my thoughts out on it, let's actually see what they themselves have to say. So today we are announcing an update with three additions effective August 19th in just three days. So actually legal before uh, California. Crazy. So three cards banned. Unwavering Slash, Frog Lashing, and Amphibious. Holy freaking cow, guys. All right. The rise of the Life Suyu Asui 1 decks has pushed the characters an outlier against other top contender decks in the format. True. <laughs> Our decision was made as a combination of the deck's consistency, there should be an apostrophe there, as a combination of the deck's consistency in executing a turn 2 lethal game plan, the results of the deck in competitive play, and the solitaire style gameplay pattern the deck employs. Very true. Um, if you're not private to it, there's a lot of Suyu decks running around. They're like these like 50 card, 25 attack, 25 non-attack lists, and their goal is to just draw every attack in, in the deck by like turn two, and just play six, seven, eight of them because everything draws cards or re-readies, and you can just murder people before they've got any kind of a chance to play the game whatsoever. Even if they know what you're doing, even if they should have built and passed for two turns straight, preparing as much as they can for this, they have answers on their board, they have silver bullets, they have everything ready. Sometimes it just doesn't matter because this character can just play seven attacks on turn two with like five or six foundations and it's nobody's business. Why can it do that though? Right here. Frog Lashing and Amphibious provide above bar value for their costs often netting you ahead in terms of game value and being played. The impacts of those cards have made waves across multiple deck archetypes, not solely Suyu Asui 1, and as such, banning these specific cards should reign in the power level of Suyu Asui 1 decks without removing her from the format completely, while also stabilizing the impact these cards had on the format as a whole. So a lot to chew there. First of all, providing above bar value. Absolutely. Amphibious is a 1-5 spam that is essentially four foundations every turn um, in Asui because you can use it twice on your turn, um, or I suppose three, right, if you're using them both, on, on each rotation because then you can clear something from your card pool on your turn, ready it again, and it's just like you got two readies out of a 1-5, which is like crazy. And then Lashing is simply like, it's an overstated move, it's a 1-move with Breaker 1, it readies 2, so it's actually a 3-diff, and it's like a 10 damage minimum move, usually. Above bar value is uh, not even beginning to scratch the surface of the definition of these cards. Uh, and they're definitely a huge part of why these Asui decks can do what they want to do right now. Um, and we've seen these cards across multiple deck archetypes. I mean, Lashing and Amphibious are huge, huge game players in pretty much every air deck whatsoever. Huge part of Asui, uh, a huge part of Denki to an extent too. Amphibious is a huge part of like all of the life decks all over the place. Uh, the Momo decks. I mean, these cards are these two cards are just actually everywhere whatsoever. So that's definitely what they mean by uh, stabilizing the impact on the format as a whole. These two cards are one of the main key players. The team, however, will keep a watchful eye on the format, and if Suyu Asuwon deems to be unhealthy beyond these changes, further action will be taken against the character and her kit. So this is what I'm really wondering right here. These are definitely good changes, and I think these should happen. Whether or not these are enough to, to bring Asui in or not, I think these are two changes that should have happened regardless. These cards are just kind of too powerful um, to exist in the current... Like, looking at the current curb of what the designers want, I don't think that these cards fit within that anymore. Now, as far as Asui herself goes, that's my main concern, right, is have they tested the the 25 attack, uh, you know, Asui decks without Lash and Amphibious, and have they deemed that they suck, they're, they're no longer worthy of, of being looked at? I'd say they're probably somewhere in the middle. I'd say that gameplay experience of, you know, the, the solitaire turn to lethal play is probably still occurring every once in a while based on it's just a little more affected by checks and like what attacks you draw because you don't have as many free readies anymore and you don't have the massive damage bombs that the frog lashings are anymore right like you don't have those things anymore so i have to i have to assume that they're happening a lot less and that they're happening with these with these you know testing these changes they're happening um, seldomly enough to where the dev team has uh has decided that it's not as big of a of an issue anymore what do I think? 
I don't know. I've seen these Azu decks perform those lethal lines without lashing and without amphibious quite a handful of times. Um, although the consistency being hurt is probably the biggest thing here. And with the consistency being hurt, I have to assume that uh, that's kind of what they're going for, right? The consistency being hurt means that people probably won't take this deck as much anyway, because sometimes you just don't get to do that. And when you don't get to do that all the time, why would you, you know, take the risk of playing this really glass cannon deck like this? Um, so I think that puts those decks in an okay spot uh, as far as that's concerned. Asui as a whole, I think Asui can still build like more more nuanced, fair, and balanced decks that aren't these, you know, these solitaire turn two type of decks. I think Asui can still build those decks and play within them and play within them like reasonably so. I don't think the character is bad by any means. You still just like never have progressive difficulty and you still get to have a lot of really, really good interactions. Um, it's just that two of your most powerful ones have been taken away. But I think I think the the solitaire Asui decks are for the most part dead. I don't think Asui as a character is dead by any means. I think she's really still very good. Honestly, I would still put her very much up there. Uh, she's just not going to like cheat out these unfair wins against you nearly as often. But I think she's a she's a fine character standalone, uh, and then she'll still get to do that sometimes. It's just a lot harder to to execute. Hey you! You like the My Hero Academia collectible card game, right? If the answer is at least a resounding probably, you should head right on over to unfunstuff.com for all of your MHA CCG purchasing needs. We've got the new set Heroes Clash on pre-order as well as the new DLC 2 in stock. And if you want to use coupon code Wealthy Aspirations, you can get 5% off your entire freaking order and also support old Levi a little bit along the way. The link for all this is going to be right down in the description below. So get on over there and go yourself some amazing product from some amazing people. Back to the video. In a similar vein, oh no, no, no. In a similar vein, Unwavering Slash is a card that accrues a large amount of value currently in the game and imposes game design restrictions with future sets. This is something that's kind of been like the less talked about thing for quite a while, but it's definitely been on our minds. Is that Unwavering Slash, um, it's really Stadium, right? Stadium coming in is what made us kind of all realize this card's actually quite insane. This card, so first of all, this card does a lot of things, right? It is a five diff. It's a four mid for four, so it's quite understated. It's very mid, uh, but it toolboxes any asset from your discard pile. It readies a foundation and it draws a card. It's also a charge and a weapon, which is relevant for a certain Kyoka Jiro. Um, but bottom line is the card the card does a lot of things for sure, but does it do more things than something like Back Alley Haymaker maybe? Kind of, kind of, not particularly, but kind of. So like the main issue is like why why is this card going the way of the dodo? You know, I mean it's a great card for sure. Fantastic card for sure. But what specifically is making it um, disappear right now? Imposing game design restrictions with future sets. This is the big thing right here. This card is able to toolbox any asset from your discard pile, and that is just an extremely limiting thing to have in the game right now. And we immediately saw what Stadium. Stadium Stadium came out and instantly this card went from like a like a seven or an eight to a straight up ten out of ten. Good, because being able to toolbox a card like Stadium was really crazy, and of course the interactions with stuff like Small and Limber, and then, you know, bringing in a new Stadium, kicking the old one out, getting that re-ready and that draw, getting that Stadium draw, you know, those interactions were just crazy. And it's clear that if this card continues to exist, the, the design team is going to have to think really carefully about any asset they want to print on the three unwavering slash symbols, because otherwise, it has the potential to just get so out of hand super fast. Um, and so this is kind of something that's been in the grapevine for a while. It's certainly very, very proactive, but I have to imagine this because there are some crazy assets in set three that they wanted to print uh, that they needed to get this card out of the way for. We feel strongly that taking a proactive approach to what will likely be outlier strong competitive decks of the format will lend to a healthier, more diverse meta. Yeah, basically exactly that. There's probably some really nutty assets they want to make in set three, and there's just no way that they can make them with an Warrior Slash being in the game. Uh, I, of course, as the resident weapon player, the all symbol stan, the, the proud owner of these bad boys right here, I'm a little sad for sure, I'm a little sad for sure, but it's very understandable, I, I, I agree that the card needs to go, when it when, when just, when Stadium came out I realized, huh, yeah, this is a bit of a design issue, this card's probably going to kick the bucket at some point in the future, I just didn't expect them to be so proactive with it, um, but I don't 
hate the decision, especially with set three right around the corner, especially as the actual set three card reveals are going to be starting tomorrow. Um, and so I'm sure they don't want people seeing these uh, these crazy assets and, and going, oh my God, unwavering is going to be crazy. And then, you know, maybe people go and buy all these unwaverings and then they announce the ban. That, that's a lot less fun. So I, I kind of get they're, they're, they're looking out for everyone in this stance. Unfortunately, everyone who owns a billion frog lashings, which if you play this game, you probably do because they're in like every single deck. That is just kind of the L that, uh, that we're all going to have to take for the sake of the health of the game. The health and balance of the game is one of our top priorities and we are committed to making changes as is necessary to make the game as enjoyable as possible. We'll be releasing more insight in regards to these decisions in developer blog posts in the near future. Thank you for co your continued support of the MHA CCG. Uh, this is really exciting. I'm, I would definitely love to get some more blog posts. That's something I've been pushing them to do a lot. A lot is uh, give us a lot more insight into their into their perspective, right? I really like to know how the designers, um, how how really anyone within Jasco thinks. I think it's very very interesting, um, and I like that. That's a good promise. And I mean, man, we are committed to making changes as is necessary. They absolutely are. Um, again, you know, back when. Back when I made my my ban list video, right, the main thing on it was ban frog lashing. You know, that's kind of been like my agenda since then, um, and it's finally been fulfilled. But at what cost? Um, jo jokes aside, I'm really glad to see this card go. This card going makes a lot of sense too. Uh, unwavering and then you know, unwavering for the future design space makes a lot of sense too. But I'm just surprised that they really did it, right? Because like the main the main inhibitor in all those discussions was. Frog Lashing's an ultra rare for a popular fan favorite character. They can't just ban it. That just looks bad. It looks bad. It looks it looks wrong. You know, there's been so many uh, so many discussions around like what makes the most sense for the health of the game, but also what makes the most sense for the image of the game. Because you're gonna have a lot of naysayers. You know, it's the same thing back with coordinate effort got axed. A lot of naysayers that are like, oh my goodness, you know, we're one set in. You can't just start banning cards left and right. That's unhealthy and it looks so bad. Um, and it still kind of does to an extent. Uh, uh, but I think that's mostly just that's mostly just from an image standpoint. I think it's really okay. You know, nobody's perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it per se. I just I get that some people think it looks bad, but it's much worse to just have a uh, have an unhealthy and unfun game state. Uh, so it's just kind of one of those situations where you can't really have your cake and eat it uh, as well, right? So I'm glad to see these things go. I'm glad to see that they are not worrying as hard about that image standpoint and instead doing what is good for the health of the game overall. Because there are people who are going to come in and say, oh my goodness, Asui's my favorite character, I want to play Asui. Well, her coolest foundation and then her coolest attack are banned, buddy. Even though you just pulled those cards, that big ultra rare you just pulled, you cannot play those cards, buddy. And that does feel bad, and it looks bad from a lot of angles. But it's the sacrifice that Jasco is willing to make from a decision-making standpoint for the health and the balance of the game. And as someone who that is much more important to, as a player and enthusiast of the game who wants to see it have a long and beautiful and bright future, I'm really glad that they went ahead, swallowed that pill, and made that tough decision. Big kudos to them all. And I'm eager to see them. Uh, I'm eager to see them continue to make this cutthroat decision making. For, for for the health and for the health the health and balance of the game they said it right here folks guys those are all my thoughts on uh, on this crazy freaking uh, Tuesday morning straight up ban list no erratas here baby these are triple triple threat bans uh, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comment section below though I'm always down to talk about these things and hit me up I also have a discord where we can talk about these things as well and if you liked what you saw I make tons of MHA content uh, and there's totally a lot more coming in the back burner and throughout these coming weeks as we approach some more of these exciting events these set three reveals and the first season three things as well and we're gonna have a ton of cool stuff on the channel and I hope that you guys can be a part of that ride. This has been Levi with Alliteration Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.